A mysterious fire broke out last night at a SpaceX Boca Chica facility, and meanwhile in Washington, D.C., Bill Nelson puts his butt on the line. Good morning and welcome to The Angry Astronaut. I wasn't intending to do any content today. I'm going to be traveling to Houston, but things continue to happen here. Um, if I had the financial ability and if my son were not going to university in September, I would consider actually staying here for the next several months and cover SpaceX's reconstruction of the launch pad and on their path, hopefully, to restore flight to Starship. By the way, this is going to be sort of a vlog uh, format, not a whole lot of editing, just to get the information out to you folks as rapidly as possible. So first of all, here in Boca Chica, there was a fire, a brief fire, as near as we can tell last night, that was caught by the Lab Padre cameras. Uh, please like and subscribe to that channel, by the way. Uh, we have no information as to what caused it, but it was sizable. If you look at the massive column of smoke here compared to S25, which is undergoing testing, it was a sizable fire, although SpaceX seemed to get it under control and extinguished pretty rapidly. That having been said, though, it will be interesting to discover what exactly transpired there. By the way, if you're unfamiliar with this location, this is a separate facility that is located where the Massey's gun range used to be. Um, SpaceX bought this property some time ago and used it for some more sensitive testing. It's actually impossible to approach this area the way that you can approach other SpaceX facilities. It's on a private road and SpaceX keeps it strictly monitored and S25 is currently there they're undergoing testing. So, not sure what's going on there. We will update you as rapidly as possible. And meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., Bill Nelson was testifying in front of the House Science Committee. I'm going to provide you with a couple of quotes um, from that particular session because he was quizzed as to how confident he was about Starship being the sole HLS provider for Artemis and when it was likely to return to service. And Bill Nelson, let me tell you, really has put his butt on the line because when Elon Musk says one to two months, we're going to be launching in the summer or whatever, he's not really answerable to anybody. But Bill Nelson is answerable to Congress when he makes commitments, and he said essentially the same thing that Elon Musk said, that he expects that Starship will be returning to service in one to two months, which once again, in my opinion, is completely impossible. We all know how quickly the FAA completes reports and studies, their analyses, etc., right? Yeah, sure, they're going to get that done in 60 days. And of course, Starship cannot launch until the FAA gives the go-ahead. He made no mention of this whatsoever. Instead, he simply said that this is the way that SpaceX does things, which is true, um, and that he had, had every confidence that they would be launching again in the next couple of months. Once again, not really possible. Not only will the FAA investigation take a considerable amount of time, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to make this launch pad safe for another Starship launch, even if they don't use a flame trench, which by the way I think would be a terrible idea if they implement this water-cooled plate or whatever it is, they're going to need water and ongoing water pressure so that Starship doesn't melt the plate um, within seconds of ignition. And you can't do that without a water tower or some sort of pumping facility, and you're not going to build something like that and get it approved from environmental standpoints, etc. in 60 days. I really have a hard time believing that Bill Nelson has drank the Kool-Aid that Elon drinks from and is making a similar commitment. In addition to that, he also said that he expects that Starship will be setting humans on the surface of the moon, that will be landing on the surface of the moon using Lunar Starship in 2025. That was a tough one to swallow as well. He was fairly confident, he said, in that schedule. Now, look, 
I know that Bill Nelson needs to keep an optimistic approach. He needs to put on a brave face, but he also needs to be realistic. At the very least, Bill, just go ahead and be a little cautious in what you say, that these dates are dependent on a lot of things and it could get pushed out considerably depending on how things go with Starship. But he said nothing of the kind. Instead, what he said was, I'm fairly confident, but there are still a lot of things that have to be done when he was talking about the landing dates. And incidentally, NASA is in danger of losing funding right now. The Republican House being committed to getting as many tax cuts as they can get while increasing the spending limits, the deficit that the U.S. government is in right now. NASA is one of the organizations on the chopping block. And Bill Nelson made it very clear that our landing on the moon would be significantly delayed if there were any cuts to NASA, or indeed, if NASA did not get the spending increases that they require. So NASA is in a bit of trouble right now, funding-wise. Can you imagine the kind of trouble they're going to be in if none of these dates that he's talking about come to pass, if Starship doesn't return to flight for six months instead of two, or maybe even next year? I believe that that is not beyond the realm of possibility. As a matter of fact, knowing how government investigations tend to go, I think it's very likely that it's going to take that long. Difficult to believe that Bill Nelson has put himself in this kind of jeopardy with Congress. And finally, I'd like to say something about the general tone, the general spirit that tends to exist here in South Texas. I had an opportunity to speak to some more people who uh, work at a local t-shirt shop um, about how people are reacting to the launch and what happened. And I must confess, there is um, a sense of concern from a fair number of people, especially the ones who got dust deposited on their cars, their houses, etc. A lot of them believe that that dust is toxic, and even if it isn't, a lot of them are not going to be inclined to believe that any more than people tend to believe that, you know, toxic cleanups in other parts of the country have been taken care of and are not going to present any sort of health hazard to their children. There's just going to be some problems I foresee here in the future as far as public relations are concerned, and that also could impact not only the FAA investigation, but also the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, who has to okay all of this as well. The long and the short of it is, I think SpaceX has a lot more than a couple of months ahead of them. I think they have a long, hard road that I think they can overcome. Just to be clear, I am certain that SpaceX can eventually overcome these problems, put Starship into service, and revolutionize space travel forever. But can they do it on Artemis's timetable? That is very much in question. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.